Good morning folks, I thought I'd do a quick, I don't know if you call this a shrink rip or just a, an intro slash look at a couple of magazines, also a couple of games that arrived and, and a magazine and uh, we're going to be off the cuff stuff, I've not had a chance to get into this and look at it at all so it'll be uh, first impression style, uh, these maps away, um, let's see. First thing, uh, Paper Paper Wars turned up, the latest edition to that, issue 80, and no plastic bag inside the envelope, so if the envelope gets wet, the game and the magazine are ruined, and I'm wondering, I guess not too many things will be damaged, but with, and without, and being coming in a plain paper bag, not a padded bag, also tends to let... Uh, the, the, the counter sheets get down. This is really, really superficial and minor, and I'm not complaining at all. But see how that gets bent up. If you end up with a rough postmaster or postman in your area, your magazine is going to be all dinged up. And for the money we pay for these things, I would just like to see at least a stiff piece of cardboard slightly larger than the magazine or a padded envelope if I'm going to pay this much money for this magazine. So once again, here we go. Let's have a quick look at this guy. I'm not going to get into all the details on it, but uh, there's a um, <clears throat> number of articles and reviews in here. The, the feature game is Setting Sun, Rising Sun, which is a Steve Newberg game, and I'll be interested in playing this at some point. It's not super high on the list, but it's there. And there's a review of Balance of Powers, in here as well, which, uh, well actually this looks like it's from the designer perhaps. Anyway, and Red Poppy's campaigns, etc, etc. So there's a bunch of stuff in here, full color, <coughs> kind of a, uh, a turning point uh, simulations, reviews, uh, Battle of Stalingrad. I haven't heard anything about this game. Uh, interesting scale here, so we'll see what that's like. No Retreat 3. Feel like the No Retreat mechanic and metaphor has been kind of worn out here, but um, I'll be interested to see what John Burt thinks about it. Uh, I'll say the graphics have certainly kind of kicked up a notch in the Paper Wars magazine as well. I'm starting to feel like it's more in the, the realm of uh, Battles magazine, except that these are digital cuts, not, not actual photographs of the games, which I would prefer to see rather than digital, but nevertheless, there you go. So some decent long articles here. Another review by John Bird. Looks like they were struggling for other writers this time around. Uh, very long wordy rules for this game. Woo, that's interesting. A couple of charts in here. Let's check out the map. Subscription renewal time. I just renewed my subscription. This is a area movement game. Pretty straight up map, right, there's, uh, we're, we're dealing with uh, just down to the Philippine Seas area, nice, nothing spectacular, but nice, uh, I mean, if you're going to do small maps, I like this, this is pretty cool, you're going to do small maps, you've got an opportunity to uh, be a little more detailed with the, the colour and the artwork, although it is fairly vibrant when you look at it with the, the port markers and information here and there, so who knows, maybe I'm just being fussy today because I'm tired. Counter art looks cool, everything's set right. Shippies. You can use that, that's a technical term, it's a wargamer term, shippies, term, shippies. All right, rules, 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 designer notes. Derivative of Grand Fleet, perhaps, is what it's saying here. Like I said, know nothing about this game or its design intent, but we will have a further look at it once we get into it. Now, uh, a router for Thunderbirds at War. That's awesome. I will be interested in taking a look at that. I enjoyed this game. As a solo game, you had a few more choices to make than you usually do with solitaire games, and I think that made it interesting. Uh, kind of cool. It's still, still kind of play-by-numbers, though. Uh, Chinese Civil War 1930, I have not heard of this game, published by 2 Plus, so that will be worth reading. Now I'm flipping these pages right in front of you, so it's probably annoying, nevertheless. Uh, Chinese cards, they're going to be challenging to read. 
Oh. Now I wonder if this is a review or avatorial. This looks like avatorial. Yeah. Okay, well, it's nice to find out a little bit more about the game. Unless you go on Consim World, pretty much it's impossible to find out anything about the Compass games that are coming out and what they're about. I just saw some really disappointing commentary about Las Barricadas, the platoon scale game. It seems like there's a lot of futzing around with morale rules, and that's really kind of disappointing. More avatorial. And of course, I guess you all saw. Uh, Enrico's player this, he was not thrilled with the game overall. Ypres. <clears throat> okay, so that's that. Now, interesting stuff. So Siege of War Gun, not uh, gamed very often, not written about much. Um, this is a area-based ba area game from Revolution Games. It was designed uh, by Patrick Rust, Rust, Rustaman, pardon the pronunciation there. Roger Miller's a developer. Roger's doing some great stuff over at Revolution Games. Uh, I'm really, uh, really impressed with the designs and the, some of the innovations that Roger's come out with with some of his games, like the, uh, the Gazala Battle of Gazala game. They have had some unevenness with some of their production quality, and of course their. Uh, and the you know the types of things they're using you know that the, their experimentation with counter counters and maps and things like that. So we've got some cards here. We've got a nice bag that comes in. Once again, I know nothing about this game, but I purchased it purely because I wanted to uh, see something more about the Soviet invasion of uh, Af bleh, of Afghanistan. This uh, doubles as your cover sheet and. Uh, Unit tables, <coughs> movement example, uh, unit descriptions. We've got 11 pages of rules, including scenarios. That's some great artwork on the cover there. Very cool. Flip you through this. The rules in Revolution games are, generally speaking, very well laid out and well structured and clear and concise. And you can read them and go, oh, okay, I understand what the intent of this game is. Typically speaking, uh, I've liked all the games I've played. I just uh, some of the inter the interfaces to the games, the map encounter, uh, either the choice of material or the size of the hexes or the the, the way they've arranged tracks and things. Some like Washington's Crossing is probably the game that I like the least from them, but it's still a very interesting game. Um, everything else I've enjoyed a lot. Uh, so I'll be curious to see how this goes. Uh, <coughs> This, this uh, at first glance at the rules without reading anything. All right, this is a nice map, a nice uh, you know, medium weight stock on the map. This kind of feels like uh, a storm of a game uh, with the area movement and the way that just as I skim the rules here and look at the sequence of play. Uh, then you've got your uh, units. There's not a whole lot of units in this particular game. But I think this will be pretty interesting to, to get a feel for the Afga Afghan war and, and what went on there. I'm not sure how these cards are going to play in, and that's what drives me to think it might be kind of like a Storm Over game. Storm Over Dien Ben Phu or Normandy style. Yeah, Informer is bombing with actions and when they can be played, etc. Yeah, these look. Uh, Similar in uh, in concept. We'll see if they're the same in execution. Huh? Cool. All right. So that's two quick things. I haven't had a uh, well. I have had time to play. I have been playing some games, and I have been reading rules for games to work out what I want to do next. Uh, next pro up probably is going to be the Guam uh, Pacific Islands campaign game Guam. I am waiting for my buddy to get back from Europe before we start our exploration of the Pacific War. We're going to do the Coral Sea campaign. That's all set up and ready to roll, so we'll be seeing more of that. I know I had lots of people saying, Hey, Kevin, when are you going to play some more of that Pacific War stuff? Come on, dude. And I will be doing that. we just got to get to it. I don't have anything else set up at the moment other than some Vassal games I'm playing. And so we will probably have some time to get to 
one of these titles here, maybe this uh, the Siege of Orgon, uh, is probably what I'm thinking will sneak onto the table at some point. All right, I'm going to let you go here, and I am going to come back and do another quick video in regards to uh, Pacific Islands campaign, Guam. I have some questions for you guys in terms of organization that I'd like to ask you for your opinions. Talk to you soon.